Hello everyone. Hope you're doing good today. Uh, I want to make this video hoping it will put a nail on the head of the issue of Romans 7 and the idea that sin lives in the born of the spirit child of God. We will look at some of the scriptures from the same book of Romans in context and clearly show that if we would hold to the idea that sin lives in the child of God, it is because of preconceived ideas when we read the text and because it means translation in the text. So we will look at the original Greek and see what it really says. So we will, we will start by comparing the following scriptures, okay? Chatter, and we're gonna compare what um, God says in Romans 6, 7 uh, and 8 about the law and about sin. And uh, we're gonna see if Romans 7, 13 to 25 is speaking about a, a child of God, born of the Spirit, or is talking to the unsaved person or the Jew that that was under the law and they um, they were living in their sin which is trying to obey the law and 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 fail, failing because what the law does okay so in Romans 6 it says that we have died to sin in Romans 7 it says that we are dead to the law in Romans 7, 13, it says we are sold under sin. So what are we? Sold under sin or dead to sin? In, in Romans 6, it says joined to Christ. We are joined to Christ. Same as Romans 7, we're joined to Christ. We're married to him. And in Romans 7, it says we're prisoner of sin. So how can we be prisoner of of sin and join to Christ or uh, free from sin. How can we be free from sin and de a prisoner of sin? In Romans 6, it says, bear fruit to sanctification. In, verse, in Romans 7, it says, bear fruit to God, not in the flesh. We're not in the flesh. In Romans 7, it says, we can't do n n no good, can't do good. Oh, because we're on the flesh. <laughs> and, uh, so we're, w w what are we, in the flesh or not in the flesh? Now remember, uh, in Romans 6, it says we're members of his body, slaves to righteousness. In Romans 7, it says members of his body, no bearing fruit for, uh, uh, for death. No, we're not bringing fruit for death, but fruit unto God. Now in Romans 7 13 it says members of the body worrying against my mind. So what are we? Again in Romans 6 not under the law. Romans 7 released from the law. Romans 7 13 trying to keep the law. So what are we? Trying to keep the law or not under the law? We're released from the law. Uh, in Romans 6, the body of sin is abolished. In Romans 7, we see, 7, 4, we, see, uh, we serve God by spirit, not law. In Romans 7, 13, 25, enslaved to the body of death. So what are we, a slave to the body of death? Or we are uh, serving God by the Spirit, not the law. We're free from the body of sin and death. That's the question. Uh, now, let me show you how many times God says that we are dead to sin. Romans 6, 2. God forbid. God, for, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Romans 6, 7. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, in order for that to be true in, in our lives, we must do the following. 
we must believe what the Word of God says. In Romans 6.11 it says, Likewise reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we, we have to um, believe that we are what the Bible says we are. Now, if we don't believe what God plainly says about how the gospel works, then we will end up having a worthless religion like any other religion of works in the world. But that is another subject for another time. Now, let's look at Romans 7, 4 to 6. Uh, first of all, it says that we are dead to the law, right? Because... Sin is the transgression of the law. So if there's no law, then there's no sin. That's simple. In, in John, 1 John 3, 4, it says, Whosoever commit, committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Therefore, Romans 7 starts with an analogy of what the law is and how it works and what it does in an unsaved person. Know you know, brethren, for I speak to them who know the law, how the law had dominion over a man as long as he liveth. So as long as he is unsaved, I'm born of the Spirit, the law is going to have dominion over him. As long as he is under the law, as long as he is uh, he's not free from the law. So he is speaking to those who know the law, the religious people. He's not speaking to those who have not the law, like the non-religious, Romans 2.14. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, this having not the law, are a law unto themselves. But that is another subject for another video. That is a subject for another video. However, in Romans 7, 4, it says, Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. God plainly says who the born of the spirit children of God are, dead to the law, so that we can marry another. And who is that another? The one that was raised from the dead. And why should we marry Jesus? so that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Now comes the controversial verse in Romans 7, 13 to 25. Uh, Romans 7, 14, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Uh, and who is sold under sin? Uh, and who is bought with a price? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. We are bought with the blood of Jesus. We are bought with a price. We are saved, born of the Spirit. Okay, now who is carnal and who is spiritual? Romans 8, 1. Therefore, is, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The next subject we will look at is whether we are in the flesh or we are not in the flesh anymore. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And I want to leave you with this question. Are we still living in a body of flesh? Yes, we are. But we, but the Bible says that we are not in the flesh anymore. So how is that? 